Hi, I'm Bart Kelsey and you're watching part two of the OpenGameArt.org series on pixel art. Um, today I'm going to go over configuring uh, the Krita paint program um, to do pixel art. Um, if you are using a different pixel art editor you can pretty much skip this, although you know you might want to stick around just to see what Krita is all about. Um, I will get right to it. Um, cool thing that Krita has, this is something that if you're a Photoshop user you might recognize, are workspaces. Um, I've already got a pixel art workspace here, but since I'm going to basically walk people through how to set up their own workspace, I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to call this a pixel art tutorial. And I'll hit save. And it's down here. So I'm going to select that one. Um, notice when I create the workspace, it is exactly the same as the workspace that I started from. So it just basically saves a copy. Um, so the first thing I want to show you guys how to do is how to create a pixel art brush. Uh, one thing that I find is a bit of an oversight in Krita is that there is no uh, pixel art brush among the many brushes by default. Um, it's not that it's impossible to make one, it's just that they didn't think to put one in there, which I hope is something that they will change eventually. But for now, you kind of have to make your own. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is select a brush. I'm going to go with this one right here. Um, doesn't really matter which one you pick, although if you want, you'll probably want to choose something that's fairly close to where we're trying to go. Um, and this is, uh, let's see here. Yes, this is called Basic Tip Default, um, which is a good starting point. Uh, so now there are two things that we need to do to make it sharp like a pixel brush. And as we can see right now, I'm going to change the radius down to 5. Um, you have that those anti-aliased edges, which look nice, but aren't really what we want. Um, first thing to do that, that we need to do to make it sharp is change the fade all the way to 1. Um, so we're going to go back out here. And if you notice, it's a bit sharper, but it's still not quite it. But if you look at, uh, and let's let's increase the diameter. See, so if you look at this, the pixel edges are all sharp here, um, whereas they get softer and softer as you lower the fade. So I'm going to put that back to one. Um, so the other thing we want to do is turn on this sharpness feature right here. Um, and that tells it to sharpen itself to the nearest pixel and not uh, not anti-alias at all. Um, if you're using a mouse, this does not matter. If you're using a tablet, you will probably want to take this curve and set everything to maximum. Um, by default, the mouse is always considered to be at maximum pressure, so you don't have to worry about it. But I would set this up to the top. Um, and if we go here, note now that it is completely sharp. Um, so I'm going to change the radius. Uh, back to one and now we have a nice looking pixel brush. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this layer here uh, just so I've got something blank. Alright so, so we've got this brush that we've just sort of edited. Um, over here is this overwrite preset button. We don't actually want to do this. We don't want to overwrite the brush preset because you might want to use it sometime later. Um, so instead I'm gonna create a new preset. I'm just going to save that to presets. Um, and that should show up all the way at the end, most likely. Yep, here it is, with no icon currently. This over here is the icon, so you can always make an icon for the brush if you'd like. Um, overwrite it, note that icon appears. Um, so, so now um, you will see that this is now part of your palette. Um, what I like to do is have several brushes that I can get to quickly that are slightly different in size. So I would make one that's say two pixels um, and one that's three pixels. Um, and I would save each one of these separately. I'm not, I'm not going to do that here. Um, and then the next thing I would do um, if I ever want a dithering brush, which is probably not something I'm going to use very much in these tutorials, but it's kind of a cool thing, so I figure I'd show it to you. Um, if I go down to pattern and then check this box, um, and then if I go and I find a good dithering pattern, like I'll just pick this half tone here, um, then if I go back, and as long as my brush radius is set to three pixels, it will dither. Um, so I'm going to choose a different color here on this color selector. Um, so notice though, uh, 
what's happening here is I'm overwriting the uh, pixels that I'm already putting down because it's only dithering, you know, every other pixel. Um, so no matter where I start the brush, it's always dithering the same one. So, so now I'll probably want to create another dithering brush with an inverted texture. And what that will do is it will change the texture so that it will come in and I can dither the other 50% of the pixels here. Um, so that, that's sort of very, very basic uh, technique for setting up pixel brushes in Krita. Um, obviously there's a lot of stuff to explore here that I'm really not going to get into for the purposes of this tutorial, um, but there are tons more things you can do with it, so I would definitely kind of play around. It's a lot of fun. Um, so it, now that we've got a brush or two set up, um, I'm going to show you some uh, quick ways to set up your hotkeys. Um, if you notice here, the show grid and snap to grid options, which I like to use when I'm doing pixel art sometimes, um, do not have hotkeys set with them, uh, but this is very easy to fix. Uh, if I go to uh, settings and then I do configure shortcut shortcuts, uh, I just say type grid up in the search. So now here's show grid. Um, going to hit custom and I'm going to say control apostrophe which is uh, I believe what Photoshop uses um, so it's telling me there's a conflict here this also resets canvas transformations we're not going to be using that in pixel art so I'm going to go ahead and reassign that um, so now it will show and hide the grid um, and I'm going to hit OK to save that and now I can flip the grid on and off so that is how you can change your hotkeys in Krita which is good if there's anything else you want to set a hotkey for. Um, so the next thing I want to go over are dockers. Um, those are these little windows over here. Um, I'm going to get rid of the dockers that we're not going to use, uh, like the reference images I'm not going to use in the tutorial, uh, this add shape docker. Um, the advanced color selector, I don't know if it's, and I believe it's enabled by default, um, but normally the so if you can configure this thing and normally it'll be in this triangular configuration um, which a lot of people like I'm not a big fan of it so um, I like to come down here and pick this uh, this one right here uh, but you can use whichever one you want it doesn't really matter um, layers we're going to use so we'll keep that the channels one we're really not going to touch so I'm going to get rid of this so basically I'm just kind of clearing out all of the dockers that um, we're not going to make use of. And I'm going to go and add a few more. Um, so if we go up to, uh, to I believe, yeah, settings and then dockers. Um, so there are a couple that are really handy for pixel art. The first one that I like is palette. Um, and you can add these. And then I'm going to just take this and drag this up so it, it shares a space with the automatic color selector. Um, now the cool thing about the palette is it's got a number of presets. Um, and that includes these two pixel art palettes, which I believe um, are the Dawnbringer 16 and 32 palettes, although I'm not sure why they're not named that here. Um, it could be they're slightly changed. I don't want to say with absolute certainty that they're the Dawnbringer palette, but I believe they are. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time in this, this 32 palette right here. Um, so it's good. It's got it already. You don't have, ever have to load it in, although it's certainly able to add more if you'd like. Um, the other thing that I like to have handy, uh, go to Dockers, and I believe there's an Undo History Docker right here. Uh, I'm going to move this down below the brush presets, just so we can kind of page back through our undos if we want. Okay, so so here's this pretty decent set of Dockers. The first thing you'll notice are these brush presets. Um, we've still got the many, many brushes that Critic comes with. Um, I've already set up a number of pixel brushes, uh, but I will show you how to do this really quick. So let's take a look at our new pixel brush. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this to a tag, um, and you can enter any tag that you want. And basically tags allow you to organize your brushes in, in a sensible way so you can get to a particular group of them. Um, if I didn't already have the pixel tag, I would just type it in right here, but since I've already got some brushes assigned to that, I can just select the pixel tag right here. Um, and then what I can do is I can go over 
to this little pull down here and click pixel and now I am looking at just my pixel brushes. Um, if I don't want a particular brush in there I can just remove it from the tag. Um, so now we have a nice small selection of pixel brushes that I'll be working with um, without having to scroll through the many many others. So one other thing that, that is kind of neat about Krita is it's got this brush palette. Uh, the default brush palette that comes with Krita is, has got a number of the default brushes. Obviously these here are my own pixel brushes, so I'm just going to quickly show you how you can change those. Um, if you go up to setting and then you say select favorite presets, um, you can see these available presets here, so I'm going to just click on one add to favorites and from then on it will be in that palette there that pops up. If I want to get rid of it I just click on it and remove it and then I can uh, close and I'm done. Um, so that is a nice way to get the set of brushes that you frequently use just right in front of you so you really don't even have to go to the brush palette. Um, I'm not sure how many brushes you're going to be working with. Um, I typically don't work with all that many. Um, so the five that I have here is probably more than enough for me, but you know, if you're doing other stuff, maybe you want more than that. Um, so uh, finally, um, I want to get into a couple little tips as far as for uh, making your workflow as fast as possible. Um, and also just sort of dealing with the way Krita works. Uh, so first off, let's go to this three pixel brush right here. Um, I'm going to pick black right now. Uh, now if I use the eraser tool, and the way you can get to the eraser is you click on this button here and it erases in the shape of your brush. Uh, the hot key for this is E, so you'll probably want to get used to that. So I've got my brush here, then if I click there I erase. Notice here that underneath this layer is transparency. Um, Krita is always transparent on the bottom. Um, so you probably when you get here, if you start up with a white layer, you probably just want to get rid of it. Um, and then when you do, you will end up with a transparent layer instead that is sort of added automatically. And then you can draw on top of that. Um, now, one other thing I like to do as far as working with pixel art, making it a little bit easier for me to see, is to add a second layer here. And then if I go to the bottom layer and I take the fill brush and uh, say I go to the advanced color selector, and then put this at about 50% gray, fill that in. Um, that gives me a nice, very neutral area to work with. So then if I go back in here um, and edit my pixels again, uh, the darks will look very dark and the lights will look very light. For some reason I feel like I'm doing something a bit wrong here. There we go. Um, so if I go back and edit my, my uh, pixel art now, the darks will be very dark and the lights will look very light. So it's gray background is a good thing. Uh, one other thing you might want to do with this bottom layer is just lock it so you don't accidentally edit it. Um, so now I can go in here and erase and then it will give me the bottom layer color, which is good. Um, one last thing I want to show you, let's say you're painting with a number of different colors, and this is something if you're, if you've done any pixel art before you'll probably already be aware of this, uh, or really much digital art at all. Um, I like the eyedropper tool a lot. Uh, the way you can get to the eyedropper tool in Krita is just with Alt. Um, you can also click on it uh, right here if you'd like, but to use it temporarily you just click on Alt click on it and then your current color which will show up in the advanced color selector is right here. Now unfortunately the color palette doesn't reflect it if you select a new color outside the color palette itself um, so you may it may lead you astray if you're using the, uh, the eyedropper as far as what color you have selected. Um, if this is a problem um, take the advanced color selector box here and move it up somewhere where you can get to it um, beside the palette. So then even if you don't have a particular color selected in the palette, you can still see on the advanced color selector what the current color is. Um, okay, so one other thing I like uh, is having a crosshair cursor. I find having the brush-shaped cursor to be a little bit distracting sometimes. Uh, there's also a little bug 
in Kratom, and I will show you what this is. Uh, if I set this, uh, where is that cursor shape? I'm going to set it to brush outline and hit OK. Um, then when I go here, looks fine right now, but if, if I set the brush size to 1, um, I get this funny little half pixel triangle. Um, not quite sure what's up with that, uh, even though it's still drawing correctly. Um, it's kind of a little bit hard to see where it's supposed to go, so like I said, I like to go in Settings, Configure Krita. It will be set to Brush Outline by default. You can just change that to Crosshair and you're good to go. Um, one other hotkey that you might be interested in if you have some other tool selected is B, which brings you back to the regular brush. Um, so that is really about it. Um, at this point, if you've done all this stuff, your credit environment should be pretty much good to go for pixel art. Um, so that is the end of this brief tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching, um, and as usual, like, subscribe, and uh, we are running a continuing Patreon campaign, so if you like open game art or you like these videos, please stop by and uh, toss a couple bucks our way. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much.